It's funny how we learn things. If I think back to the 1990s, the late 1990s, in the last 20 or so years of my career, there's been three main things that have influenced my career and what I've learned. The first was just doing the actual work. So over 15 years, when I worked for BMS companies, working as a service technician, a commissioning technician, a service small projects engineer, a design engineer, and project management. Through that journey, I learned a lot of stuff. And it made a big difference also that I was lucky enough to live and work in three different countries over that time. And you'd be surprised that different countries do things quite different. Um, so I learned lots of different things there around how to do the same thing differently. The second thing was then after 15 years moving into BMS consulting, I learned a massive amount there because I started to have access to understanding what every single BMS company was doing, what they were doing well, what they were doing not so well. And I learned a lot from that. So if we were doing BMS witnessing and something went wrong, I would defect that and we'd come up with a resolution and then I would learn from that mistake. So I, I learned a lot from the different BMS companies when I started doing consulting. The third part is a bit more interesting because when I moved into BMS training, I didn't think that I would learn anything. I thought that I'd be teaching you know, the students or, or you guys everything. But I did start to learn quite a lot through BMS training because when I started to create these these training manuals I had to sit down for you know a hundred hours and write out all the content in these training manuals and you know teaching somebody the technical content actually is the easy part the difficult part is really engaging with the audience and taking them through a journey over the course where you the first part you've got to convince them that what we're doing isn't good enough. They've got to believe that in their heart. If you just show them a better way, they won't implement that unless you've convinced them that we need to change. So in the 10 week advanced maintenance course, in the first two hours, we just go through this engagement piece where we talk about you know, how we've been doing things for the last 20 years. Um, and the first section, which is called, what is the industry standard for BMS maintenance? And the first dot point is periodic preventive maintenance. How did this originate? Why do we do periodic preventative maintenance? And I think we've discussed in a previous video how I think I told a story about, you know, before 1980, before we had building management systems and before we had networks and integration, all these things, we had to do periodic preventative maintenance. So there was that story and we go through all that. But the second dot point is what this video is about. The second dot point says, periodic preventative maintenance does not make equipment last longer. Periodic preventative maintenance does not make equipment last longer. Now that might not sound very interesting to you, but bear with me and let's run through this. And I think the second video next time will be, why does BMS equipment fail? When you combine this, the two ideas together, it's quite dramatic. BMS preventative maintenance, it's not like a car, okay? If you do not do maintenance on your car, eventually it will break down. So if you don't periodically once a year, service your car, and do preventative maintenance, change the engine oil, change the oil filters, change the air filters, replace the radiator fluid, check the brake pads, check the brake discs. If you do not periodically do preventative maintenance on your motor vehicle or your motorcycle, at some point it will break down. Maybe not next year or the next year, but maybe in five years, maybe in 10 years, your car will break down if you don't do that and you have a very expensive repair. The BMS isn't like that. Of course, BMS people, you know this, but we don't go to a valve actuator, take the cover off and then grease the gears in there and spray some WD-40 and change the piece and, change and tweak that. We don't do that. 
The process of BMS preventative maintenance is simply to walk around and look for broken things to then replace and even charge our customer extra to replace. So BMS preventative maintenance is we go around, we drive the damper actuator open and we drive it closed. Is it working? Yes or no. We go to the valve actuator, we drive it open, we drive it closed. Is it working? Yes or no. BMS periodic preventative maintenance does not make the BMS equipment last any longer. So every year you go check AHU-1's valve actuator. You drive it up, you drive it down. Year two, year three, year four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Every year you drive the actuator open, you drive it closed, you confirm that it's working. Year 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Every year you drive the actuator open, you drive it closed. In the 16th year, the actuator fails and you have to replace it. That process of stroking the valve actuator every year for 15 years did not prolong the life of the actuator. The actuator would have failed in the 16th year anyway because the process of doing preventative maintenance and charging our customers 100,000 Australian dollars a year to do maintenance, that stuff does not make the BMS last one year longer or the equipment to last one year longer than it would have if we didn't check it. It will still fail in the 16th year. So if you think about that, if you're spending 100,000 Australian dollars a year on preventative maintenance, and in 10 years, you've spent a million dollars on preventative maintenance. I would almost exaggerate this concept by saying that that is a zero return on investment for the owner. It's a zero return on investment. The million dollars that the building owner invests in the building management system over a 10 year cycle has a zero return on investment. Of course, if you don't do maintenance, things will happen, okay? So I'm not saying we don't have to do maintenance. I just want us to get this idea in our head that the way we generally do BMS maintenance provides zero value to the building owner. So why do we do it? If preventative maintenance, and although most companies talk about predictive maintenance and other sorts of stuff, uh, optimization and tuning, generally, what the techs are doing on site is preventative maintenance, the majority of it. So if it provides zero value, why do we do it? Why are we doing it if it provides zero value? Because every year, BMS equipment fails prematurely. You have to do preventative maintenance because BMS stuff is failing all the time for no reason. So after about five years, your project's five years old, from then, um, Stuff starts to break here and there randomly every single year. You know, two damper actuators this year, a valve actuator there, some pressure switches, some pressure transmitters, a temperature sensors, some controllers failed. Things fail prematurely. So we have to walk around and look for broken things so we can find those broken things and repair them. Because if we don't do preventative maintenance, two or three years later, the whole thing will fall apart and you need to spend a million dollars and replace the whole thing. So we have to do preventative maintenance, but only because our equipment is prematurely failing. Damper actuators and valve actuators, they are probably designed to last, I'd say, you know, 15 years. That's their mean time between failure. You know, actually I'm getting ahead of myself because that's actually a part of next, the next video. So next video is gonna discuss why does BMS equipment fail prematurely? Because if we address the reason why they're failing, then they won't fail. And I would exaggerate this concept that maybe you would only do preventative maintenance once every five years or once every 10 years to do a quick check through and scan through because stuff won't fail for no reason if we fix the underlying problems. Right now, we just go around and just keep replacing the things. Every single job, you know, 20, 10, 20, 30 buildings get built in the city every year, and 
we just do the same mistakes and we just go into maintenance, we just keep fixing things for another 20 years. So this video, which discusses this idea that preventative maintenance doesn't make the BMS last longer, it's not a very exciting thing necessarily. It's good to sort of connect the dots together, which I did when I wrote this up, this manual, I started to think, oh, hang on a second, like, why are we even doing this in the first place? This idea, plus the next video's idea about why does stuff fail, put those two ideas together, I think it's pretty dramatic. Now, at the moment, my intention is to run this advanced maintenance course only once a year. It's very time intensive for me. It's 20 hours of live content, plus engagement and the learning management system. But if you're interested in, if you're in Australia, New Zealand, or in our time zone, these are live classroom sessions. They're face-to-face -face discussions on virtual classrooms. Um, please reach out to me and go on the waiting list. If the waiting list fills up, maybe we'll run a second session in around September. Please like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.